Good morning and welcome back to my daily transcontinental race 2023 race coverage. This is day four, so let's head over to the race tracker and see what's been going on. And I guess the big news is that the, the lead riders um, have now reached the second checkpoint. They've headed through the second checkpoint and are now on the second parkour. So this, uh, this parkour um, basically skirts the Austrian and the Slovenian uh, border. Um, so yeah, Basically, Christoph Strasser reached the checkpoint first, uh, ahead of Robin Gemperle. However, the two—I mean, you can see from the from the map here—I mean, they're they really are getting quite a gap over the other riders. Um, let's have a little look at the um, just the timings from the checkpoint. So, as you can see. Um, from CP1, CP2, 31 hours, 34 minutes for Christoph, and 31.53 for Robin. Now at this point, um, I, I said the same at the, the first checkpoint. I think they were 14 minutes apart at, at CP1 up in Lavigno. Um, they're about just under 20 minutes apart here. So at this stage in the race, that really doesn't mean anything. I mean, 20 minutes, that's a puncher. That's running out of food. That's, you know, that's having mechanical. That's a wrong turning. So essentially, they are still neck and neck. And, you know, it's, it's going to be really exciting as they head south into, well, into the good bit of the route now, into the Balkans, um, you know, into the the, 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 the the places where it's, it's a little bit... Um, a little bit more interesting to ride a bike, let's say. Um, the road surfaces aren't so good. Uh, there's a lot more mountains, and things just things just work different, and it's it's excellent. So, you know, they're really um, the, the race is just starting. Um, let's just see what's going on um, with everyone else, and then I'll come back to those two riders, and we'll do a little bit of uh, analytics. Um, the analytics side of of the tracking software is now starting to work a bit better because of the data. I mean, I'm not a biggest the biggest fan of follow my challenge. Um, Firstly, it's, it's trying to fry my laptop and um, th there's just not quite the same data available as um, map progress or track leaders, things like that. But anyway, that's just me complaining. Um, as you can see, that the field is nicely spread out and we, we've kind of basically got two pairs essentially at the head of the race. Um, so Robin and Christoph, they, they've really kind of scorched away from the rest of the field. It doesn't look like they've they slept last night. So I've, I've, you can see the green line here. I've basically enabled Robin and Christoph's tracks. And normally it shows you when they've slept with a little pause sign, but it just doesn't look like there's been any stop overnight. So they seem to have just pushed through the night and, you know, really made a, they're, they're, they're racing each other. Um, it's, it's going to be a really exciting race to, to see, you know, how they get on. Um, so uh, we've got Marin de saint Expiré and um, Florian uh, chasing. So these two, I mean, they're not they're not that far. They're probably less than ten miles away. Let me just hide Robin's track and hopefully speed up this website because, like I said, it doesn't really like doesn't really like people doing stuff on it. Um, so yeah, the so Manuel, uh, sorry, Florian and. Um, uh, Marin, they're 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 probably what well, that's that's a ten mile scale there. They're they're about ten miles apart, so uh, you know, like forty five minutes on the road. Again, not a massive gap in transcontinental terms, um, and they've got approximately a twenty mile gap back to the the chasing pack. So Robert Muller here in fourth. Um, if so, if you if you listen to the Transcontinental Race podcast, they do a daily podcast. I would recommend listening to it. They obviously these guys are on the ground and they get interviews with the riders and it really sounded like Robert was having a bad time through the Alps. He wasn't enjoying the wet weather um, and the cold. But he seems to have sorted himself out. He, like from, from from the interview he sounded like he was in a really negative headspace. Um, but the weather is warming up now. Um, you know, once you're this side of the Alps, there, there's been this heat wave from the south of Europe, and obviously the Alps is a massive weather barrier. So now the riders are gonna, they're, they're not gonna be worrying about rain, they're gonna be worrying about keeping cool and drinking enough, I think. So it seems uh, like Robert um, is maybe, you know, he, he maybe goes better in the warmer weather. Uh, and he seems to have sort of moved through a bit. Um, so he's one to keep an eye on. Um, as with any of this pack, I mean, I, I'm pretty certain that one of these front four riders will have an issue at some point. Um, just the odds suggest that, that that's probably what will happen. Um, so yeah, and like I said, it's it's been the easy bit so far. Fatigue's hitting, hitting in now. Things just work differently in, in Southern Europe. The road quality is not so good. You know, if you're used to the way the traffic works in the north, 
uh, and you know the resupply is what you're going to find it's, it is going to start subtly change and by this point they will undoubtedly be on the seven day croissant diet which um, basically they're these um, <laughs> well they're croissants that last seven days and come in a pre-packed sealed package with cream and stuff in um, if you've done the TCI you'll know exactly what I mean I've eaten a lot of those things in my life and I don't particularly want to eat another one but that's what the riders will probably be snacking on um, further back in the women's field well the first woman on the road is still with Sherry uh, she's in a pair and um, they're, they're doing really well um, they had a little bit of a, a mishap coming out of Lavigno had to do a bit of a backtrack because there was like a, I think I mentioned yesterday there's a there's a tunnel that you can go through but you can only go through on a on a shuttle bus so therefore if you're racing you're not able to do that um, I will come back to that route though in a second because we've had some more creative ways of getting out of Lavigno and then Jamie Wilson um, where is she in here I believe um, she is she's leading the women's race um, and she's got a, a good gap over Nikki Shaw. Looks like Nikki stopped overnight. Um, so yeah, Jamie is 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 leading the solo women at the moment. Um, so yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how that race develops. Um, so yeah, well, I'm just going to get the analytics up while I do that, uh, and while it thinks about loading up, I'm going to go over to say thank you to Holy Fat because obviously these guys make this possible. Um, I'm using their their bars. They're basically low, as I've said before, low 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 carb but high in fat. So there's 230 calories per bar. So quite dense, uh, and also they're they're not sweet as other stuff. So quite often they're just nice because they're slightly salty, and it's better than eating loads of sweet stuff on one of these long rides. So yeah, all the info on that is below. So go and check that out and. Um, yeah see if that's kind of something you're interesting interested in well follow my challenges riding up i'm just going to bring up riber gps so this is um this is riber gps um while my laptop's just thinking about it all so this is the route i plotted and it's fair to say most of the riders have, have followed this route um in out of the mountains there's a couple of passes uh, obviously I plotted it over the Stelvio I've got a nice story I was going to tell you yesterday about about Mike and the Stelvio um, they either went over Stelvio or Umbrella Pass and then down towards Bolzano and then there's this big long valley which as you can see from the profile there, there, there's a bit of elevation but it is you know in alpine terms relatively flat and then they are on the parkour um, so let me zoom in I've highlighted the parkour in yellow here on the route um, all this information is um, you can see it uh, on my Riber GPS I'll put the link below in the description so you can see the, the parkour start this is actually the checkpoint which is normally it, it seems to be there's a parkour paired with a checkpoint but in this instance the park uh, the checkpoint is actually on the parkour um, so there's a couple of little climbs in there and as you can see on the the profile down the bottom the last section is actually gravel it doesn't look like the riders have reached it or the leaders have reached it yet we've got no imagery yet coming out from the official transcontinental feed um, so I'm sure tomorrow I'll have loads of information on that um, and loads more riders will be going through there um, I've ridden a bit of gravel in this area and it's I, I to be honest I think it's probably going to be just gravel surface roads um, I mean, for people like Robin, it's going to be no issue because they just went mountain biking yesterday to get out of Lavigno. Um, so yeah, so that is what the riders um, are dealing with now, and and then they've got to start the big the big turn south. And as I've kind of alluded to, this is where it gets really interesting. Um, so this is the route I've kind of I've plotted. Um, I've not. Like I said, on the as with the first one, I've not got into like I've not done like the fine comb sweep that I would do if I was actually racing, but it gives you a fairly good idea. Um, we we really need to start looking at the transcontinental race resource map here. Um, so this shows a lot of banned roads, and you know it's it's for safety, uh, and there's road warnings because some of the roads down here are a little bit sketchy. They can be quite busy, kind of single carriageway A roads with not much space, and it's not the place you want to be riding a bike. You know, early days TCR, there wasn't so many warnings and I went down some some roads I probably wouldn't go down again to be honest um, so yeah this is all about rider safety um, so yeah the riders have got to head head south now um, so the the checkpoint is in the middle of Albania and as you can see there's they're going to be guided in a, like a quite a particular way um, there's a lot of banned roads on the way in um, so I've kind of like put this this route together so riders are going to be heading through Slovenia into Croatia 
Now I've ridden um, the two TCRs I've done. The first one I went all the way down the coast um, and I've been there touring. I mean, it can be quite busy, but there's loads of resupply. It's a fairly good road and the traffic's not going that fast most of the time. Um, there is an, like a, there's basically a ridge of hills and then there's like a slightly flat, flat away in the middle. Um, that's probably, probably the way most riders will go. Um, the other time I did TCR, the uh, checkpoint was in Croatia right over here so then we had to go through Bosnia um, and I think I ended up coming through Mostar and then south here so there's some fairly big mountains in there um, it's a really cool part of the world I really like it and then the riders are going to have to go through uh, I suspect Skoda um, which is is kind of the first big city you get through to in Albania I've passed through it in every single TCR uh, I think I've been there three times um, the the checkpoint always used to be in Kotor on the two years I did it which is down here so after Kotor I followed exactly the same route every time I have also ridden this road here which is beautiful um, but I think yeah riders this time are going to end up taking this slightly flatter route through Podja Grecia Oh, my, my my pronunciations is gonna are gonna get bad bad now um and then they basically there's not many options because of the band roads they've got to just weave their way through so this is this is like the hot spot on the um on the road there that you, you see the main highway into Tirana I've ridden it a few times and they were doing road works you know almost 10 years ago so I imagine it's quite big and busy and you've got a constant stream of traffic coming by you so that's why that road is banned without a doubt and then they've got to weave their way through the checkpoint is in Burrell uh, and the parkour follows on after and this is where it's going to get interesting I'm pretty sure that's a gravel track um, what state of gravel it is I don't know um, but yeah it's going to be going to be interesting in the next couple of days I suspect it's going to take a few days to get down there two and a half days or so um, the pace will slow up I suspect the roads just aren't as fast uh, down in this part of the world and as you can see by the contours it's just up and down all the time um, and a, a few more turns and they can be the surfaces can be quite potholed at times in certain areas. Croatia's okay, Albania, it's a bit hit and miss. So yeah, that's what the riders are going to be um, seeing over the next couple of days. Um, I suspect by the time I update tomorrow, the, the, the two leaders will be well well through Croatia and, and you know closing in towards Montenegro um, and Albania. So that is something to look forward to. Um, so yeah, that, that is that. Um, I'm just going to try and get uh, follow my challenge up again um, and see if it's decided to load itself up like I said it is quite slow um, and then I've got some stories on Instagram to show you um, I've also got I'll tell you now the, the nice little story about Mike Hall and um, the Stelvio so the first ever transcontinental race um, the checkpoint was right on top of the Stelvio and then in 2014 um, again, the, the checkpoint was on a Stelvio. So after the first uh, the first TCR, um, Mike basically locked his bike up on the railings at the top, and he left his he left his lock there. Um, and then I went touring through there a few months later, and I knew he he left it there. And I went up there, and sure enough, his lock was there on the railings at the top of the Stelvio on the edge of the little car park. Um, and I sent him a message and sent him the photo and uh, <laughs> just let him know his, 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 his bike lock was still there. So my question is, any riders going over the Stelvio over the next few days, is Mike's lock still there? Because that is a bit of transcontinental race history. That, that, that lock would have been there since 2013. So if it's still there, I'd love to see a photo of it. Um, and yeah, it's almost like a little memorial to Mike in the transcontinental race on top of Stelvio. Um, so yeah, it'd be nice if, it, nice if it is still there. So that's that's my little anecdote about Michael and Stelvio. Let's go across to the analytics um, on following my challenge. It looks like it's finally decided to load up for me. Um, as I said, I'm not I'm not the biggest the biggest fan of this. It just is quite energy intense on the old laptop. But now we've got a couple of checkpoints. We've got some really interesting data. So Christoph, we'll, we'll focus on the, the two front runners, Strasser and Robin Gampele. Um, so daily average distance 516k for Christoph, 475 for Robin. I mean bear in mind they're basically in the same place um, and we know Christoph did a slightly longer route and Robin took that off-road shortcut. Um, estimated moving speed 25k for Christoph, 
24.9 for Robin. So bearing in mind Robin's done the off-road, that would have taken a bit of a dent off it. So they're almost identical there um, in terms of moving. Um, and moving time. Now this is where we see we start seeing the difference. So, well, stopped time I think is probably more of an indicator. Stop time for, for Christoph, uh, 12 hours, 7 minutes, 15%. Whereas Robin, 17 hours, one minute, 21%. So Robin's, pre they're pretty much together. Uh, Robin's, what, 20 minutes back, but he's stopped a lot more. Now, does that mean he's rested more? Um, or, you know, is Christoph just pushing too hard? You know, these 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 are the factors that are going to uh, that are gonna start coming into play in, in like going through the Balkans over the next few days. You know, has Robin played a blinder, rested really early, uh, saved a lot of energy, and then he's gonna push really hard through the, through, through this area. Um, whereas Christoph, you know, pushed it. Yeah, you know, but you know, he, he is very experienced, so he knows what to do. Um, you know, he'd ride he'd ride race across America and they basically you, that's a fully supported race and they would they would basically not sleep. They sleep for twenty minutes at a time. So he doesn't know how to deal with the sleep. It's gonna be interesting to see how it how it develops. Um our chasers, uh, Florian and Marin, uh so moving average speed, uh twenty three K an hour for Marin, twenty one for Florian. Stop time, 16 hours for Marin. We know he had some, some issues early on, 20%. But look at look at uh, Florian, eight hours stopped, only 10%. And he's slept the least out of all the top riders. I suspect we might see him drop back a bit um, compared to the others. It's not always sustainable to not sleep. Um, so I, I, would, I would suspect over the next couple of days he might start dropping back a little bit. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, I know Marin looks after himself and he finishes strong as well. So I would expect to see a big push to him. But he's, he's, not, he's just not riding as fast as the league guys. So I doubt he'll be able to close the gap. But you never know. This is the transcontinental race. Anything can happen. Let's, uh, let's get, get rid of that, that slow draining website. Um, not rubber GPS, <laughs> I'm in the tracker. And let's have a look at some stories. So uh, obviously nothing nothing really from the bulk of yesterday. Um, these guys are pushing hard, so we've not heard much um, on the social medias. But this was yesterday when um, Christoph Strasser was was coming up and over the Stelvio. So yeah, let's, let's hear from Christoph, see what he has to say um, about riding up over the Stelvio yesterday. Today when I woke up in the morning, I just heard pouring rain, water everywhere and I checked the weather forecast for Stelvio and it said 2 degrees and snow. Uh, I was really frustrated and uh, I was asking maybe I should wait a little bit or I don't know, I had no idea. I could not take one more day off heavy rain and cold in the Alps but then when I got out of the <coughs> apartment it was actually like this but I just heard a small river nearby and I thought it was rain so that's how your tired mind can play your tricks in an ultra distance race and it's absolutely great today so interesting to hear even the guys at the front you know they're tired now they're pushing your mind can play tricks on you and um yeah he nearly uh he nearly didn't <laughs> didn't go out in the morning um some good stories from robin um if i'm not too late with them um where are we so he took that the pass over the um the off-road um Oh, I'm too late now. Um, but yeah, it basically showed the single track, which looked really cool. Um, and we've got him this morning on the second parkour, um, making friends with the dogs. So yeah, look, it's, it doesn't look so bad here. Uh, nice small mountain roads, and I suspect there'll be a bit of gravel at the end, as we already discussed. Um, talking about the, the mountain parkour, so um, there was one rider who, who actually hiked over where the tunnel was um, coming out of Lavigno. Um, 
cat295 so that's jep van leech sorry if i've pronounced your name wrong but yeah he's got this uh this fancy cannondale aero road bike and he basically went over the hiking path um similar to where marin and uh, robin went um but he brought along this uh this really cool little hiker bike harness so basically he just hiked over the top of the tunnel the most direct route out of the vigno um, and got back on his bike and carried on riding so that's some pretty cool prep and local knowledge from uh, uh, from you up there so yeah uh, finally I'm just going to end on Tommy Check um, so he's a really great photographer so check out his, his Instagram um, and he went over the San Bernardo San, San Bernard Pass the other day and it's just this amazing cobbled climb um, so I just thought I'd share it because it looks really cool. Um, that is what you get when you're riding in the Alps. And that is pretty much uh, all I've got for today. So I'll be back tomorrow. I should have some more details of that parkour and the checkpoint too. See, you know, how probably the top 10 are looking through there. And yeah, then we're getting heading south into the Balkans where it gets really interesting. So thank, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see these every day. And I shall catch you 